Okay. Hi, and welcome to the Arts District Podcast. I'm Lauren. And I'm Georgia. And we're on episode 33 this week, the big 33. Woohoo! Getting closer and closer to 52 each week. Yep. Um, it's going to feel so good when we finally get to 52. Plus, it's going to be the summer, and everything's going to be wonderful. And part of me wishes we had never taken any weeks off, so it would actually be like our one-year oh, anniversary. Yeah. But, because... Yeah. I think it's nice this way, because now we can celebrate both episode 52 and our one-year anniversary. Yeah, we'll have two celebrations. Yeah. All right, I'm down. Well, also, we celebrate, like, every 10 episodes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Well, Can't wait till we have, like, 10 cupcakes at the bottom yeah. of the screen. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to hold Do all of us out. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, it's Easter weekend. Uh, mm-hmm. It's Friday in Toronto right now. Beautiful day outside. And George and I are heading up to Aurelia later this afternoon. Yeah. Looking forward to being back home and getting in some family time. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so this will be Sunday, so... Happy Easter Sunday. Enjoy your day off tomorrow. Yeah. Um, okay, so we'll get straight to it then. Um, I just want to mention a couple of little things briefly, and then I have an artist to talk about today, finally. Yay! Yeah, got on it. Okay, and I've got kind of a movie news story thing that I just found out about. Cool. Um, okay, so I will just start off by mentioning a couple of short little things. I just wanted to kind of mention... So last week's episode, I was talking about that 14 billion Spotify acquisition, which was supposed to happen on Wednesday if it went through, and nothing happened. So uh, apparently the buyer was Google, of course. I mean, really? They're the only ones that can really afford to do that, I think. Um, And they pulled out for whatever reason. I can't really remember the article. But um, yeah, I posted it on our podcast Facebook page so if you saw it and read it good for you you understand what I'm talking about (laughs) um yeah so that went through so don't worry anymore yeah the world is not going to end um and you will still be able to watch music videos on YouTube and stuff like that for free yeah for now we'll see what happens in the future Mm -hmm. um secondly Joni Mitchell was in the hospital this week did you hear about that I saw that I follow her Facebook page or whatever and it popped up and I was like oh. I didn't know she had a Facebook page I need to get well, on that she doesn't run it oh. <laughs> someone else yeah. she probably doesn't know what Facebook is so yeah. no. she's pretty hip she probably knows but yeah um, yeah I heard it on the radio when I was driving to work in the morning they were just like and some sad news for a uh, singer songwriter Joni Mitchell I was like oh, no she's died like no. something's wrong and then they're like she's just in the hospital like she was unconscious found unconscious in her apartment or something like that yeah or her house, and I immediately was like, oh my gosh, a world without Joni would be such a sad world, I know. she's the best, so yeah. sending positive vibes her way, mm-hmm. um, healthy vibes. Get well soon, Joni. Um, How old is she? She's gotta be like in her 60s or 70s. I think she's 71. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She makes great art. Have you ever seen her paintings? Oh yeah. Like She's a wicked artist, mm-hmm. musically and visually so talented yeah um i would love to have a Joni mitchell piece hanging in my apartment yeah that'd be cool a lot of self-portraits yeah yeah Yeah. one day when i'm rich i'll have one yep you'll be friends yeah when she'll she'll just gift it to me for christmas um okay and one other little thing mentioned last night i went out to the lisi flamingo in hamilton to see uh, my friends play they have a cover band called the vibes And they were so good. I haven't seen them since their very first show, which was last summer, I think. Mm. Or it might have been a year ago. Uh, Yeah, and it was so much fun. It felt so good to get out again and see some live music because I haven't been out since Juno week. And, yeah, it was awesome. So if you're in Hamilton ever, uh, they play every other Thursday at the Lady's Flamingo in Hess Village. It's free, so you should come on out and hear some good live music. Nice. And, um... The Virginia Wolves, uh, Adam's old cover band. Oh, yeah. They got up and did two songs, so that was a nice little reunion. Oh, cool. Everyone seemed to love that. It was, it was a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Um, I haven't been out like that in a long time, so... Awesome. It was enjoyable, yeah. So that those were just my quick little mentions. Okay. So I will get into what I'm going to talk about. Um, I followed NPR's Tumblr, because... How do I know that name? NPR, National Public Radio, in the States. 
they do like there's a lot of podcasts that they do like Radio Lab is an NPR podcast I think This American Life is an NPR podcast which are a couple of my faves um, it's just like I guess there is music they have a lot of cool shows and some talk like a lot of talk radio too that's like stories and like interesting research stuff okay anyway it feels like such a grown-up thing to be like yeah i love npr <laughs> <laughs> but it's like grown-up and also sort of loser loserish but um, you're not a loser it's, it's good it's really interesting i don't know if you're interested in weird stuff like it's not all weird but anyway i feel grown up because i like npr <laughs> <laughs> um but anyway <clears throat> turns out they brought back a story that was happening a while ago because there is a movie coming out this week that revolves around this story. Um, I guess first I will tell you a little bit about the story because I had no idea and it happened a while ago. Um, but basically, I think we all know this, that during the Second World War, the Nazis kind of raided art from all over the place. There's right. been other movies about it. I think Monuments Man is about how kind of like American soldiers were like, yeah, we took back the art from all the Nazis mm-hmm. and we were awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's other stories there as well. So this is about um, Maria Altman. She's a Jewish res- refugee from Nazi Austria. And it's sort of this whole thing grew in the late 90s, early 2000s, but. Um, Her aunt and uncle had to flee um, Austria. I think, actually, her aunt might have died before the whole Second World War happened, but her uncle died shortly after the Second World War. Um, But they had five Gustav Klimt paintings, one of them being the woman in gold. And the woman in gold is actually painted of, it's a portrait of, Maria's aunt Hmm. and they're like two that one and another one of the five were portraits of um, Maria's aunt and um, in the process of this aunt and uncle having to leave Austria they sort of left all their things behind like they were very wealthy and um, these things fell into Nazi hands and eventually late after the war made it into the Austrian State Gallery Hmm. and no one really knew like it wasn't public information exactly how the state ended up owning owning these <laughs> paintings um but in the late 90s early 2000s it sort of started to be more transparent within the government and they found out that these paintings were not actually willed to the state um the aunt had put in her will that she hoped her husband would donate them but then in his will, and he was the actual owner of the paintings, he was the one who paid for them, even though she is depicted in two of them, um, he willed everything to his nieces and nephews. So, like, someone's desire for someone else to give something to the state in their will is not really legally binding, you know? Like, yeah. I don't own these things, but the person who does own them, I want them to do this with it. Yeah, that'd be like me putting, I want Georgia to give her laptop to my sister or something like that. Right, yeah. Yeah. So, um, (laughs) okay. Yeah. (laughs) Yes, this is a good comparison. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Yeah. (laughs) So, yeah, it all sort of came to light, and Maria Altman, who is one of the nieces, decided in her late 80s that she wanted to sue the Austrian government. She's been living in the States for like 50 years. Um, She'd come there as a refugee in the Second World War. Um, And in Austria, she couldn't sue the government because of reasons, but in the States, she started legal action and it actually made it to the U.S. Supreme Court, which ruled that the Austrian government wasn't above this and they Um, So pretty much she won, and the Austrian government gave the five paintings from the gallery to this family, and here's where I get a little bit upset about it, because one of the things that Maria said is that she really loved these paintings, and she grew up with them in her aunt and uncle's house, and it was really nice that two of them were portraits of her aunt, and this was 2006 when they got possession of the paintings, the paintings were brought over to the U.S., 2006... 
they sold them at a Christie's auction. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and made over $300 million. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so I was like, you clearly really cared about these paintings. Yeah, you were doing an awful lot. Yeah, money. and I realized, like, all the legal proceedings must have been really expensive, but I was also kind of like, yeah, seriously? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, what was the point? I mean, I guess the point was to get the money, but, yeah. like, man. Yeah. So, I don't know where I stand on all this. I feel kind of weird about it. Um, but, uh... Yeah, um, Maria died in 2011. She was 94 years old mm. and clearly left a lot of money to her family. Anyway, but the other part of the story is that um, she had this family friend who was a young lawyer and he's the one that took on the case. Like, he was kind of an unknown, like, nobody at a big law firm. He took on this case that took, like, years and years to resolve and eventually win. And, um,. Apparently on the plane, because they lived in L.A., um, on the plane to the uh, Christie's auction, um, he started writing out the movie. And now the movie comes out this week. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so um, playing Maria is Helen Mirren, and playing the lawyer is Ryan Reynolds. Oh, awesome. It comes out this week. Um, apparently it was shot in London in about eight weeks. And yeah, what's it called? It's called The Woman in Gold. Woman in Gold? Okay. Yeah, that sounds cool. So yeah, kind of a like roundabout story. I will link the NPR. Um, it's an audio clip, but they've also got a full transcript of it. So I ended up sort of reading and listening. Yeah, you should um, put a link to the trailer or something. Yeah, I didn't actually even look at the trailer. So or uh, insert it. Yeah, so I would like to see that. Um, mm -hmm. Helen Mirren's a great actress. I think I heard about that on the radio in passing. It sounds familiar, but mm -hmm. it reminds me of that story we talked about. Was it last week or two weeks ago with the, the Picasso? Picasso things. Yeah. Did anything more happen there? I, I haven't heard, heard anything. anything. Yeah. Interesting. Mm -hmm. All those people getting artwork out of the yeah out of the air. So, interesting story. Yeah. And if you haven't seen the paintings. I don't know, maybe I can post one or yeah, I haven't seen put them. links to them because they're gorgeous. And there really is like a lot of gold and stunning. Like mm -hmm. if I showed you, you would recognize. Who painted them? Gustav Klimt. Klimt. I have heard of that name. Um, so it, I think the woman in gold was painted in like 1907. Is what I want to say. Wow. Yeah. So. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Um, just check our battery. I think battery's fine. Or not battery. Our time? time? Yeah, time. We have about six minutes. Mm. Is this a six minute story? I don't know. I was about to do our intro again. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so last week I mentioned in passing when I was talking about Jazz FM and their yearly um, Jazz Libs yeah. concert. Uh, one of the performers uh, was this singer-songwriter named Kat Edmondson. And I mentioned that when I hear the little clip that they play of her for the commercial on the radio that really caught my ear and I wanted to learn some more about her, so I did. Uh, and she is my musical feature for today. Yay! <laughs> um, yeah, so Kat Edmondson is a 31-year-old singer-songwriter from the States. I think she lives in like Austin or something like that. Um, she put out her debut album in 2009, it was called Take to the Sky. She followed it up in 2012 with um, Way Down Low, which was actually funded by Kickstarter campaign. I love it when people do that. You yeah. know, it's great to hear a lot of like success stories from people using Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. um, and her third album came out last year in September uh, called The Big Picture, and it reached number one on the Billboard Heat Seekers chart, which is good news for her. Her second album actually reached number one on that chart as well. So she's doing pretty pretty well. Um, her music, she coined her, this term herself, uh, mm -hmm. she calls her like vintage pop, which I think is a very good summarization. Descriptor? Yeah. Let's just keep making up words here. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> a very good word to describe her music. Um, it's kind of jazzy, which is probably why they play it on Jazz FM. Mm -hmm. um, but not all songs that are. Uh, she definitely has a couple that are more pop. Um, with not really any jazz elements in it at all. But her voice is kind of the thing that makes it jazzy. I don't know, the way she sings. But um, very distinct voice. I don't really know how... I, like, I can't think of the word to describe it. It's like... 
Like nasally? Kind of, I guess, nasally. But, like, nice and yeah. interesting. I love distinct voices, and I've mentioned that before, and a lot of the people that I talk about for the podcast is if they have a distinct voice, I'm going to love it mm-hmm. because it's, there's just so much character and so many things to listen for, and it's just neat. Um, I really like hearing people with interesting voices. So mm-hmm. she definitely falls into that category. Um, and, I mean, I only heard, like, 10 seconds of her on the radio, and I was like, damn, I'm hooked. So, yeah, um, yeah so... What else? Um, you can check her website out at uh, com. It looks like Kate in the in the URL. Um, yeah, it does. I was like, Kate D. Monson? What? <laughs> uh, uh, you go on there for news, videos, tour info, music, all that jazz. Um, did you like that there. pun? Was that a pun? Do you like all that jazz? And it's just oh, kind of jazzy. That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't really have the same effect if I have to uh, explain it like Sorry. that. Sorry. Um, okay, yeah, so. Did you have that written down? No. I didn't. That was like a freshie off the top of my head. It's really good. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> um, <laughs> so the song that I wanted to play for the podcast this week is the one that I kept hearing on the radio because it was just really catchy and um, I love the, the the way that the chorus goes so um, I picked a, the chorus from that and a little bit of one of the verses um, it's an interesting song if you go on YouTube and you listen to the whole thing mm-hmm. uh, the, the verses are very different from the chorus it almost sounds like a completely different song like when you're listening to the verse oh, cool. and then it like switches and it sounds like it's like a medley or something where it's like a totally different song, but it's just the chorus. So I like that um, because it's unexpected. Mm. Um, there's something kind of spontaneous about it, which I think is neat. Cool. Keeps uh, you on your toes. Yeah, keeps you on your toes. Uh, so I hope you like it. Um, yeah, I guess we'll put that in right here. Enjoy. <laughs> well, I'll never mind the weather. Together you say Why do you run away And save me for a rainy day I'm tired of the fight I turn out my light You know I'm not sleeping Okay, so uh, yeah, that was Kat Edmondson. The song was called Rainy Day Woman and it's off her album The Big Picture, which I mentioned came out last September. Um, yeah, uh, definitely jazzy, that one. Uh, I've listened to a couple of her other songs when I was trying to figure out which one to play. And I also really liked the one, it was called I Don't Know, and it's off of her second album, Way Down Low. Uh, it was, uh, it was really good. Uh, more stripped down, kind of more of a relaxed pop feel. Mm. Um, but I really liked it. There was something very raw and, um, like intriguing about the video and her voice and the, and the music for it so I recommend you go check that one out on YouTube cool. and uh, Nobody Knows That and Lucky I like those ones too so yeah go spend your afternoon or your evening uh, checking out Kat Edmondson on YouTube um, because you can still watch yeah. music on YouTube because <laughs> you can I actually would really like to buy one of her albums I'm not sure which one yet maybe I'll buy two because I really like the sounds of Way Down Low and uh, the big picture. Yeah. Um, but yeah, overall, she kind of reminds me of a cross between Nora Jones and Joni Mitchell. Um, wow, that's mm-hmm. awesome. Yeah, so <laughs> Nora Jones coming from more of a like the jazzy kind of lounge music vibe. And Joni, she, I'm not saying that she sounds like Joni, but just because Joni has such a distinct style and voice and... She does interesting things with her voice um, mm-hmm. to really add to the songs. Kat Edmondson reminds me of that too. Like there were certain parts of the songs where I was like, "Oh, something about that is very Joni." Didn't sound like Joni, but right. it's a very Joni thing to do. Gotcha. Um, yeah, so she's very unique, but the music is very accessible, which which I like. You know, um, at first you might be like, "Well, this girl has a weird voice," but like guaranteed, you're gonna listen to more than one song, okay. and I think that's awesome. Um, She's definitely doing something right. She kind of reminds me of um, Twiggy. Oh, yeah. You know, like Twiggy from the 60s. Yeah. Like the short hair, 
really round face. Um, the album cover for the big picture is actually, it reminded me, that was the thing that set me off on oh, okay. Twiggy. She's like holding a camera and she's got like her one big eye showing. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, hey, what's going on here? That just shut off because I swear I saw that. Yeah, I swear I saw it too. Oh, sorry about our camera difficulties. Yeah, hopefully that didn't change anything weird. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I watched some live videos, and she sounds the exact same, which is always nice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that's all I had to say. Okay. Other than my little note here, I love jazz for cooking and driving. Yes. It just goes so well with cooking, mm -hmm. and, like, when I drive and I listen to jazz, I feel like I'm, like, James Bond or something. Like, <laughs> Nice. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, something very, like, suave about it all. Yeah. In my really little like... Honda Civic. Yeah, very <laughs> suave. Tearing up the 403, yeah. Nice. That's how um, I do it. Um, yeah, I so. really like cooking with dinner jazz and John Devinish, that was the name. Ah, yes. Dinner jazz. We couldn't John remember that Devinish. last week. Yeah. Anyway, yes, dinner jazz. Anything on Jazz FM, like everything is good. Yeah. I don't think there's a bad time of day to be listening to Jazz FM. Mm -hmm. no, I like it. Um, this week in the morning they were doing haikus. They were like they were reading haikus that listeners had submitted, and I really wanted to put one in, mm -hmm. but I kept forgetting by the time I got to work to write the haiku. But yeah. while I was driving, I was like trying to like think of what I would write and send it in because you could win like tickets or something. I think mm. put it you were putting a draw. Anyways, oh. uh, yeah. So that was Kat Edmondson, who I heard about on Jazz FM. So mm -hmm. I hope you liked the clip that we played, and I definitely think you should go look more videos up on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And let us know what you think about her on Twitter or Facebook. And we really want to encourage you guys to start talking to us because we don't get enough feedback other than from our parents. Yeah. So actually, let us know. Actually, my parents have actually been watching lately. So normally they don't. I think they only watch when they miss me. Anyway. Oh, not that sweet? Had to <laughs> my mom stop watching it. Oh, well. Oh, well. Um, but yeah, so definitely reach out to us. Let us know what you want us to talk about. If you have yeah. any cool stories, if you have art you want to share, or music you want to share. Mm -hmm. um, we have an email address. It is super long. It's the arts, the arts district podcast dot. No. No. At there's no, there's <laughs> no, dot. no dot. The arts district podcast at gmail.com. Yes. No underscores, no caps, no nothing. No very, dots. Very basic. Except for the. Dot com. Yeah, so send us a hello. Yes. We also have Twitter, at Tad Podcast. And we have a Facebook page, which is... The Our Sister Podcast, I yeah. think. And they are all linked in the bottom every single time. So follow us. Yeah. Share it with your friends. Mm -hmm. We're going to be approaching one year soon, and we got to have some more followers. By now. <laughs> <laughs> um, we also need to get our stuff on more platforms. Yes, I keep meaning to do that, and I've just been so busy, but... It's okay. You do a lot. Oh, wow. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, we're going to head out now. Yeah. Heading up to Aurelia. Um, hope you enjoyed your long weekend. Mm -hmm. And still have one more day to go on that, so live it up tomorrow. Yeah. And we'll see you for episode 34 next week. Bye. Bye.